when Nellie died, she was buried in the public cemetery in Cork City. But the people around the city were receiving so many favours through her intercession that they asked for her to be reinterred in the sisters' cemetery. The grave was opened and her little body was intact, although I believe today that is not a sign of sainthood. The, the present beautifully designed little grave was donated to her by a, fr a grateful French client. stairway which leads to little Nellie's room. It's 108 years of age. It's steady and I would think it would make a good slimming exercise for anybody interested. I'm now entering the room, which is rather large, bright and airy. It's, a f it's situated on the first floor of a red-bricked building adjoining the living quarters of the Good Shepherd Sisters Sunday as well. The room has been vacant for 77 years. Its last occupant, a little child of four and a half, died here on the 2nd of February, 1908. Perhaps some of you have already heard about Little Nellie, known widely throughout the world as Little Nellie of Holy God. Nellie's parents, William Morgan and Mary Ahern, were natives of Waterford. But the family moved to, to uh, Spike Island, Cork City, in 1905. And there, after two years of a very painful, suffering life, death released Mrs. Organ from consumption. The bereaved her bereaved husband was now faced with the problem of placing his four motherless children where they would be properly cared for. On the advice of a priest, he consented to send his two daughters, Mary and Nellie, to us. Both the children were in a very weak condition and were battling with severe whooping cough. Nellie in particular was very frail. She spent restless nights crying in her sleep and the doctor discovered that she was suffering from a very badly curved spinal cord, which must have caused the child agonies. Nellie, was, Nellie showed great fortitude in suffering. The baby frame was, being wasted, was wasting away with consumption. Not only had it affected her lungs, but her jawbone was crumbling away with caries. This jar contains a piece of her crumbling bone. The wound had to be treated every day with disinfectants, which must have caused the child agonies. This she endured without a complaint or even an exclamation. that Nellie had a free and easy way of linking up her thoughts with Holy God. The flowers in the altar were Holy God's flowers. The clouds rolling by were Holy God's angels. The statue of Our Lady was to Nellie always Holy God's mother. The 
statue of the infant of Prague, to whom she had a tender devotion because he was a child like herself. Time came when speaking of Holy God failed to satisfy Nelly. As she said herself, she wanted to get him. Of course, let me add here that through the sacrament of baptism, a deep instinct for God is planted in each one of us, in every soul. But in most people, it remains undeveloped. In Nellie's case, however, thanks to her good mother's very real spiritual values, it became very much a part of Nellie. Hence, her powerful attraction towards Holy God and her longing to be united to him. Uh, rumours sp spread very quickly, and soon rumours of this extraordinary child reached the bishop, Dr. O'Callaghan. To the surprise of the sisters, his, his lordship sent a message one morning to say he was coming to confirm Nellie. Great was her excitement when she was told that soon she would be one of Holy God's soldiers. The bishop was so impressed that he asked to see the child again before leaving. That day, Nellie's longing to receive Holy Communion became more intense. Many times, even during the night, the plaintive little voice was heard to say, I want Holy God. Oh, when will he come? The child was now felt to be a responsibility. How was the desire of this four-year-old to be dealt with? Especially children receive communion in Nellie's day at the age of 10 or 12. However, the lover of little ones soon found a way through his priests. One of them wrote, I questioned the child accurately and very minutely about Holy Communion, and I was firmly convinced that she understood quite well what she so anxiously asked for. And with regard to the reception of the sacrament, Nellie had arrived at the use of reason. On this opinion being conveyed to his lordship, Bishop O'Callaghan, he gave permission for her first Holy Communion. When Nellie heard the glad tidings, her joy was indescribable. She repeated over and over, Now I will have Holy God in my heart. Her gaze would be directed to the tabernacle, and the question would come, but why is he locked up in that little house? On being told that Holy God was so powerful he could make himself look like a piece of bread to fit in easily, she seemed to understand, and the sacramental presence presented no further difficulty. One could conclude that the child was supernaturally enlightened. On days when the Blessed Sacrament was exposed, she would fix her eyes on the monstrance, and remain in silent adoration, oblivious of all around. To the happy event, neath wreath and veil and dressed in white, Nellie was brought from her sick bed to the chapel to the strains of the First Communion Hymn. Mm.
her eyes were fixed on the altar and on every movement of the priest who was to bring her holy God. At last the wished for moment came and those present witnessed a meeting that they would long remember. The priest wrote, the child literally hungered for her God and received him from my hands in a transport of love. Asked what she was doing, she replied, talking to Holy God. Nellie received many communions afterwards. Her constant pleading to get Holy God would not be denied. When she was too weak to come to Mass, the chaplain would bring her him for whom she so ardently yearned. When Nellie received Holy Communion in bed, her Eucharistic King rested on this table, and she would only allow white flowers to be placed on it afterwards. extraordinary things could be said about this favoured child, but what more extraordinary than that she was allowed Holy Communion before the decree of His Holiness, Pope Pius X, concerning First Communion of Little Children had been published. He received her First Holy Communion the children at Sunday's Well wrote to tell His Holiness of that happy event, and it was stated on reliable authority that when the Holy Father, when the Pope read the letter, he said to the Cardinal's secretary, this is the sign I have been waiting for. And this is the reply to the children's letter. This is the first headstone which was placed in her grave in St. Joseph's Cemetery before she was reinterred in this Compton Cemetery, resting on her little wardrobe. This cupboard contains some of little Nellie's souvenirs. Her little shoe, her boots, her red socks, her First Communion rosary beads and medal, her little tooth, there's a little story attached to this, Nellie complained of a toothache and no, the dentist couldn't find anything wrong with her teeth. Eventually the nurse put her finger around her gums and discovered that that tooth was growing into her tongue. These are her toys. A piece of the original coffin from St. Joseph Cemetery. a lock of her hair, her little hanky, the rest are toys she played with.
Ellie received her Eucharistic King sitting on this chair. an ancient gas stove with kettle on which Nellie's meals were prepared. This nurse slept on this bed and this was her wardrobe and her chair. This table was used by Nellie to play on. Now it holds the visitor's book. <laughs>